please uh, help me give a warm welcome to uh, Cody Askins and Landon McCarter. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, what I want to talk about this morning is how to go from six to seven figures. Okay, who's okay with that, by the way? Right? And if you're already at seven figures, you're like, you know what, I'm not, I'm not okay with that. I want to go from seven to eight. Okay? So maybe you can use some of these principles to do that as well. Right? I coach a lot of insurance agency owners that earn between two and $600,000 a year, and we also market for them. And I can tell you, I'm going to give you five specific steps of how you can take your current company, implement these strategies, and go to seven figures, a million bucks a year. Let me hear you if that's okay this morning, okay? Let me hear you if you're all right with a million bucks a year, okay? What I can tell you, too, is some of the stuff I'm, I'm going to share with you this morning, it's almost selfish if you don't get there, by the way. Why? Because who helps more people, the seven-figure agency owner or the six-figure agency owner? The seven-figure agency owner. Not only prospects, but also people when it comes to staff and stuff, right? Like the bigger Western marketing gets, the more agents they can help. The more prospects those agents can help, and the bigger their team gets. Yes or yes? Right? True or true? Okay, so I'm going to give you a lot of, like, those type of questions because I typically, I'm like, well, if there's, if there's no false, then why would I give a true or false? Okay, so here's what I want to start out with this morning. I went to a, I paid to go to a retreat. I've spent about, and again, when I share some of this stuff, like, a, trust me, I can learn something from everybody in the room this morning. I am probably the least intelligent guy in the room. I'm not near as intelligent as my business partner, Landon McCarter. I will just go fast and take a lot of risk. Okay, so when I share some of these stories, it doesn't mean that Cody Askins thinks he's the greatest dude on the planet, even though I probably did think that at times. I promise you that's not the case. Okay, so I was at a retreat because I've spent about $400,000 the last three and a half years on personal development and self-improvement. And I paid to go to this retreat, and I was standing up at like 9.30 at night in the middle of this lodge talking to a business owner that earned 100, his, his business did $160 million a year. Who would listen to that guy? If he's like, hey, I, I would think about doing this maybe, okay? A few of us, okay, good. Maybe the rest of us will get on board by the end, okay? $160 million a year. And he's like whiteboarding my business and the organizational infrastructure and what I should go do. And he's like, okay, because I've got several different companies, right? We've got Secure Agent Marketing, which I'm business partners with Landed on. I've also got a CA, Cody Askins brand, which is coaching, training, consulting events. We've got our 8% Nation Conference, which will have 1,007, yes, that's right, minimum, attendees this year in, in, in July in Dallas. And I'm talking to this gentleman who had a $160 million company, and he's whiteboarding all my companies. He's like, okay, who does this? I'm like, uh, me. Who, who do, okay, who does this? Me. Who manages this one? Me. Who manages this one? Me. Who manages this one? Me. Who does this? Me. Does that ring a bell for anybody, by the way? Okay. And, and he, he looked at me and finally said, dude, stop. That's your problem. You're a control freak, and you're trying to do it all. He's like, why? I said, the dumbest thing I've ever said in my life. He said, why do you do it all? I said, because I'm the best at all of it. He's like, not only is your ego getting in the way of you scaling and being successful, but also you want people in your company that are better at certain tasks than you are. He's like, that's when you really start to scale something. Right, so now we're fortunate to have several companies. Um, I just bought a plane and a storage facility. We'll do over $13 million minimum in revenue in 2021. Uh, we did not go backwards with COVID. And I can tell you, these are five strategies that I've applied over the last three years. Okay, so the number one thing I wanna share is know your numbers. And what I really mean by know your numbers is we do a monthly P&L on every single sales rep Every single month. I don't care if you've got agents, right, and you're co-oping money, whatever. I don't care if it's an, a local LOA, you have a call center. You need to know exactly how much money to the penny that you are earning on every single rep every single month. Say I if you're going to do that when you get home. Say I if you're going to do that when you get home. Say I if you're going to do that when you get home, okay? You should because I'm telling you, the only way to scale something is to actually start to know your numbers. Also... Not only did I learn during that story of like hanging out with this gentleman, because I love to like pay for knowledge. I will pay for, for, to hang out with people that know more than I do about certain things, right? And that's been a huge secret to my success, if you will, is because I'm, I, I, don't, I don't know much, right? I was born in Wynn, Arkansas. We didn't have any money growing up. Like I'm, I'm you know, a small city. 
I didn't know everything. But I was okay along the way admitting other people know what I don't, right? The more we spend time together, the more you're going to share stuff with me that I didn't even know existed. Which is why I love like the elevator conversations and by the pool and like the side conversations. That's the coolest stuff of these events, by the way. Okay, number two. I'm going to move quick because I know you guys want to get to golf. Okay, and I don't want to hold that back. I don't want you guys to mob me. Okay, number two. Gain time. Gain time. Landon and Secure Agent Marketing should be managing some portion of your marketing at some point. Because to scale, you got to see more people. The number one reason why 92% of insurance agents fail in the first three years, which you guys are, majority of you are past, by the way, so kudos to you, is they do not get in front of enough people. Like, most people are like, you know what, I, I close just fine. Like, by a show of hands, when you get in front of a prospect, you typically close a deal probably 70, 80, 90% of the time, right? So if that's the case, then it, you just need more people. And a lot of times, we don't even need more money. We just need more people, right? We just need to get in front of more people. Also, you need to know exactly how much you make per hour and actually start running your business like you actually make that per hour. Like company-wise, I make just over $5,000 an hour. Personally, I make just over $500 an hour. So should I be checking my own emails every day all throughout the day? You tell me. Like, if I can have an unbelievable executive assistant that can be doing that, should I really be doing that, right? Like, the one thing that we're never taught as business owners is how to actually scale something with people because agency owners get caught in the details of trying to do it all. And that happens so much. And, it, and, and maybe we're great at it, right? But maybe at some point, and also the, what, what I notice is when you don't delegate or you don't want to delegate and you have staff, the reason you won't delegate is because you don't trust that staff member to do it correctly. If they were phenomenal, you would delegate. If they were great, you would delegate. If they were training their job appropriately, guess what? We would delegate. Now that we've actually started, like our staff a few years ago was like the, the, the bench warmers. Like it was just, it was horrible. It was a joke. Now we, ha we, have a, we have a pretty decent staff. We're always trying to get better, but I can tell you the better your staff, the farther your company will go. There's one question we ask ourselves every time we hire somebody is, I tell my COO, ask yourself this question. Does this person make our team better, worse, or the same? And if it makes our team the same or worse, we do not hire them. If it makes our team better, I'm in. Because we have to get better for us to really start to scale something, right? Also, if you're doing interviews, the first question we ask, because we've got over 15,000 square feet and over 100 staff and employees between all of our companies, the very first question we ask ourselves, we ask a, 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 a potential new hire on a first interview, is what do you know about our company? Very first question. Shows me if they're coachable, shows me if they're, if, 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 if they're lazy, and if they know nothing or very little about our company, how focused do you think they're going to be on a day-to-day -day basis? Like, ask yourself, would you go in to interview with Mark Finken at Western Marketing and not look him up? So why would you, it's, it's, it is stupid, it's dumb. So why would you hire someone that doesn't do that? First thing we do, and it, guess what, if, if we ask them, hey, what do you know about our company? And they're like, uh, not a lot. Thank you for coming in. Have a fantastic life. There's the door. The interview is 100% over. I know I'm joking, but the interview is 100% over immediately. Why? Because time is our most valuable asset. Why should we sit with someone for 45 minutes that we know is not a good fit? Like, it's like sitting with a prospect that's like, dude, you know what? Um, I hate your company. I, I hate the carriers you represent. I'm never doing business with you, period. Well, let's spend a couple hours together. Why not? Like, what's the point? Right? Number three, scale now. I, Elon Musk says to, 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 to put your 10-year target and try to accomplish your 10-year goal in six months. That'll make you operate a little differently, won't it? Like, I'm like, okay, how can we do, like, we're in the middle of trying to figure out how to buy a retreat house, a lake house. I'm like, how can I squeeze time? How can I have, like, we have a few companies. How can I have a dozen companies that are all doing seven figures a year? How can we get the marketing company, which we will, by the way, to 12 million bucks a year? 
I believe we will get there within the next 12 months. Why? Because we're sprinting and we're trying to scale now. Instead of trying to think about, okay, well, we don't want to go too fast. We don't want to do this. Because here's what happens. Every business owner on the planet gets into business for one reason, whether we believe it or not. So that one day we can go to the Bahamas for a week and the company pays us and we don't have to do a dang thing if we don't want to. True or true? What, true or true? Okay, I want to keep you guys engaged. True or true? Do, I mean, because that's the only reason why we get into owning a company and a business is so that one day if we want to go to Hawaii for 30 days and the company pay us and the staff run the company, it happens. And, and, and I, I used to not say that because it almost sounds like lazy or complacent, but it's like that's the point of owning a business is so that one day it pays me whether I do a dang thing or not. Now, me, I'm going to always do something because I just want to. That's my personality. I, I, I enjoy the journey of like doing something big versus actually getting there and then be like, you know what, let me slow down. That's just not my personality. Now, when I'm, when, when I'm, when I'm 72, who knows, right? But I'm 30, so it, it, it ain't in me yet. But I can tell you that's the only reason p- people own a business. So I want you to think about this. If you're doing it all right now, why? Can you scale you? Or are you pretty tapped out? You're like, well, we can only do, you know, we can only, we can only manage about, me and one staff can manage about 2,000 Medicare clients. How do you get to where you not only sell but manage 10,000? Then life gets really good. Am I right? Like if you wanted to, could you do it? And most of you have enough self-confidence and belief in yourself, which is why you're already successful, by the way, okay? So I'm not saying you're not, that you're like, dude, if I want to get there, I can get there. Then why not get there? Because then all the yachts we saw in the marina, I'd love to own one of those one day. Who else is like, dude, I wouldn't mind rolling up to the Bahamas in my own own yacht, okay, or my own private jet. I'll pick up the Finkins on the way. Why not? Come on now. (laughs) Why not? When we first started 8% Nation, uh, October of 2018 was our first conference. I had never thrown a birthday party to, before. Who, who's heard about the conference, 8% Nation, before uh, right now, by the way? Okay, M- majority of it. Okay, good. We started that conference because I was at another conference, and I was like, man, our industry needs something fun, exciting to help people, to challenge people, to get winners in a room together. And so we started that conference without having a clue what we were doing. I spent over a half a million dollars. Lost 200 grand the first year. And most would be like, dude, that was really dumb. That was the single best decision of my career. I don't mind losing money if I know it's going to work out long term. Because I believe enough in myself to take the risk. Right? And so we've scaled Abers Nation from a few hundred people to now we'll have over 1,000. No question about it. In attendance, we'll sell over 1,500 tickets this year. And then a percentage won't show because that's just how people are. And that's why they're not you yet sitting in the chair with you right now is because they can't show up, right? Like step as you're recruiting agents, step one to success is just getting out of bed and showing up. That's it, which you guys have figured out. So give yourselves a hand real quick for figuring that part out. You're actually showing up and getting in front of people, right? That's why you're successful and uh, making hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe millions. Who knows? Also, three and a half years ago, I say we have over 100 staff now, three and a half years ago, zero staff. Why? Because I was trying to do it all. I was a control freak. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a very aggressive, direct, insane personality that tends to not come, externally doesn't tend to come off like that as much. But internally, I'm like ready to roar all the time. And it's like uh, the staff, even when I hired staff, they hated my guts. They didn't want to work for me. Now our staff loves working for me because I also had to learn how to communicate with my staff. You can't communicate with your staff, every single staff member, the exact same way every single time, by the way. You can't. You can't. So by show of hands, who's like, you know what? I think it's time to scale a little bit, right? I've, I've been thinking about an acronym for scale. What, what, what does that stand for? Uh, so let's, let's make it up. I, I thought about this yesterday. Sales causing accelerated luxurious earnings. I'm in. I'm in. That sound good? Scott's in. Okay. All right. Number four. Number four, details delay. If there's one thing you pick up from this morning's talk, details delay. And what I mean by that is the way I operate is I commit first, I'm in. And then I figure out the details later. 
A lot of owners have analysis paralysis. They lose themselves in all the details. They're like, I may do this, but what about this, 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 and this? Who cares? Like, we committed to do a Texas training tour earlier this year in January. We went to four different cities in Texas, and we executed and planned to do that event 13 days before during COVID in-person events. And I'm like, I want a thousand agents to register in 13 days. I don't care how we do it. I just want to do it. And my team's like, when do you want to do it? Um, 13 days from now. They're like, dude, that's a little soon. <laughs> I mean, we'll figure it out, right? Like, like with 8%, we committed, we spent a ton of money, had no clue what we were doing. Adding staff, building sales teams. Like along the way, I've made more mistakes than most people. And I'm actually proud of it because I need to fail along the way to really succeed at the level I want to succeed at. So I want to ask you a question. When you have an idea, how often do you put it out in the universe, talk about it, and start to execute it and say, I'm doing it without thinking about all the little details? Because what I believe is details delay. Also, as a business owner, this one's hard for most people. There was one thing I struggled with that killed my confidence a few years ago is I always wanted to get all of my team's opinion before I did anything to make sure they were on board. That's a problem. That will kill your personal confidence as a business owner when you start looking at your team and thinking, okay, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? What do you think of this? No, no, no. There is, there, there, there is, there is one leader. We're doing this. Are you on the ship or are you now swimming back to shore? Your call. Do not get your team's opinion on things that you know you should do. Now, should you get their opinion on some stuff? Absolutely. But if you know it's the right thing to do, quit asking them, right? Quit asking them. Like, for example, we we were buying the storage facility recently. I'm like, "I, I don't know anything about real estate. I don't care. I bought it. The same day, good thing I did because the guy had another offer for $15,000 more come in the next day. If I'd have thought about it for a day, I would have missed the deal. You get the point? Most people get lost in all the details. I'm telling you, details will delay you from scaling and doing something huge, right? Tracy, it will, it will, it will keep you from doing something massive because you're lost in all the details. And you're personally, like in your office, who's personally having to do a lot? Like you're having to do most of the work throughout the day. Okay, in in your own operation, right? A lot of hands. It doesn't have to be that way. Why? Because details delay. Number five. Okay, number five. Build a team. Build a team. Again, I'm coaching a lot of agency owners that earn between two and six hundred grand a year. And most of them don't have a sales team. Most of them don't have an operations team or they got one assistant. It's like, dude, if they're making six hundred grand a year, they can afford some staff, you know? Like, I got one in, in uh, uh, she, she's in Texas, and she's literally answering the phone, taking all service, doing all of the sales, all of the hiring, all of the interviewing, all of the submission of policies, checking all the emails, and I'm like, dude, you're, you're killing me, and you're going to kill yourself. Along the way, it's real easy to get complacent, bored, stagnant, because... We try to do it all. If there's anything you get out of this morning's message, you need a team. You need incredible people around you. I want a 1,000 staff in Springfield, Missouri. Why not? And Springfield is like 100,000 people, so it's going to be like we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna employ 1% of the city. I'm in, right? I'm in. So you need sales staff, by the way, agents, LOAs, whatever you do. Okay, You need sales staff. You, you got to duplicate yourself. You can't be making all the sales forever and expect to get to the income level that you eventually want to get to. Or, again, you're just going to kill yourself, which is okay for a time, but nobody wants to do that forever. Let's keep it real, okay? Also, operations. One of the best decisions we ever made from an operational standpoint was adding a COO, adding Andy as operations to run everything. Because what happens is there's a book called Rocket Fuel that I I, I would definitely recommend. It talks about the visionary versus the operator or the integrator. A lot of you are the visionary, but you're not the operator or the integrator. I was trying to be the visionary and implement everything. Now we have a COO that can is actually better 
at interviewing and hiring than I ever was, and at managing staff. Also, if you have staff and you have a small team, there's going to be friction from time to time because as the business owner, they're going to naturally, if, you, if, if you're getting on to them and micromanaging them, et cetera, they're, there's going to be friction, and there's gonna, it's going to hurt that relationship, and they're going to eventually not like the business owner, which is a problem because once that little relationship is frayed, the whole thing is over. So instead, we have, there's a middleman called a COO that is operating everything, holding a team accountable, hiring everyone. Everyone's reporting to him or her, and my relationship is still intact. Now their relationship is up to them and the operations person. But the moment they stop liking the owner of the company, the visionary, the person moving, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect the long-term relationship, guaranteed, okay, guaranteed. Quick story to finish up. I'll, uh, I've, I've, we, we have 20 salespeople in Springfield, Missouri, and I write down every day. I write down my goals every morning. I want 50 salespeople in Springfield, Missouri. And a couple years ago, I had a majority of my sales team walk out. And like uh, Tiger King, um, when the person got their arm bit off, and he's like, how am I ever going to financially recover from this? That was probably one of my first thoughts, too, okay? So some of you have seen the show. It's freaking hilarious, by the way, okay? All right, there we go, okay? And I was like, oh, crap. What am I going to do now? The whole team just left. Well, number one, it was one of the greatest things that's ever happened to our business, because we didn't align. Number two, I also learned how to actually work with people throughout that process. You're going to lose people along the way, and you're going to think, man, how am I ever going to financially recover from this? And I'm here to tell you that you will. The next person you hire is going to be better. Landon and I had this happen a couple years ago. We're like, man, how are we going to ever replace this specific person who's a copywriter? that was also managing a bunch of blogs and everything else. Really good. Handled a lot of our SEO stuff. The next person was double and better and more talented than the person that left. So be thinking about how can I scale now? How can I realize that details delay? And final question, if you had to paint the perfect picture of what your business looked like in 12 months right now, how would you answer that question? Okay. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Finkins. Thank you, Western Market. Appreciate you. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Let's jump into steps of a speech. Seven steps to a powerful speech. Number one. What do you think number one is? Get attention. That's right.